Folks, welcome back to 3 Zen Bobos here. So, I uh, just got back from Ohio, as I might have mentioned in a previous uh, uh, presentation. And uh, when I got back, I was going through my email and I came across this article from the Air Force Times. And it says, Air Combat Command Boss Makes the Case for Uniform Ops Inspections. And it begins with, the Kansas City Chiefs didn't just show up and win this year's Super Bowl. Tough practice sessions, hard work, and coaching were required to win the game. And then he goes on, it, the article goes on to say, that's how Air Command, Air Combat Command boss General Kenneth Wilbach expects his airmen to gear up for their own potential fight. Not on the gridiron, but across the Pacific. So, just reading that bit of the article took me back uh, to when I was a kid in Ramey Air Force Base, Puerto Rico from 1957 to 1960 and then from at Westover from 1960 to 1962 when Dad was in uh, SACS, uh, Strategic Air Command. At that time, SAC had a boss uh, named uh, General Curtis LeMay. And uh, I think of him as you will, I had a lot of respect for him. I uh, I would have loved the opportunity to work for him. I think I could have worked for him really well. At any rate, LeMay did not tolerate buffoonery. Anything short of excellence was unacceptable to LeMay. And I think the Air Force has slipped away from that attitude. And I think that uh, this guy is talking a little bit about uh, maybe taking a step back toward that, uh, that philosophy. And, um, oh, late fifties there while at Ramey, I can remember my dad, uh, preparing for an ORI, uh, operational readiness inspection. And in those days they were occasionally no notice ORIs. Uh, although you could look at the, the uh, calendar and figure out when you were due one and Pretty well have an idea it was showing up. And then you also had friends of friends of friends that worked in the command post that were calling people and oh, crap, all kinds of stuff, shenanigans like that. But uh, I remember dad for a, a week or so working on all kinds of charts on the kitchen table for his presentation. Now dad was a, a commissary officer and yet he took his job very, very serious, especially working for LeMay. He knew LeMay did not take prisoners, whether it be on the flight line, uh, in the commissary, base housing, wherever. LeMay just, he had one, one um, uh, goal in, in, uh, in sight, and uh, that was to have uh, a force to be reckoned with. And he was going to stop nothing short of achieving that. To that end, uh, on the IG team in those days were a couple guys, uh, Whip Wilson and Sundown Wells. And they were a couple of characters. They would come onto a base and they had LeMay's full backing. And they would whip that base into shape one way or the other. Or, in the case of Sundown Wells, he, he could start at the uh, gate. And if he didn't like the salute that was uh, rendered to him, he'd fire the guy. He'd call the... Uh, uh, NCOIC and the security police at the time and say, hey, get this guy off the gate. He's useless. And he would he would take that philosophy right on from the front gate all, on up to the wing commander's office. And uh, be that as it may, he uh, he would relieve a wing commander if, if need be. Those, uh, that crew here, what was it, 10, 15 years ago, that flew that B-52 from a northern tier base down to Barksdale with nukes on board, and they didn't know it. I don't know if those guys would still be serving time. Uh, I don't know if they'd still be in the Air Force, but uh, they would have been gone. So would the squadron commander, the ops officer, director of operations, and the wing commander. There's no doubt in my tiny little military mind that LeMay would have relieved those guys. They just wouldn't tolerate that. Matter of fact, I found it when I heard about that, that incident, I just found it abhorrible that um, they didn't take it more serious than what it was. It was serious. And that's the way we, we, should, we should look at that. So I'm encouraged by this guy's philosophy here. 
and I really wish him well. Uh, I think we need to get back to taking pride in wearing uh, the blue uniform. And then you see these geeks walking around, they're overweight. Um, they, they look like slobs in uniform, and man, I hate that. Um, I may not have been the most politically correct officer the Air Force had to offer, but I always made sure that uh, in those days I had a decent haircut, my shoes were shined, and my uniform was spotless. I took pride in that, and I wore, I just wore one color to exhibit that pride, Air Force blue. So like I said, I wish him well, and uh, boy, I'd, I'd like to be able to support him any way I could. Uh, I think Sundown Wells and, and Whip Wilson are both gone now, but I remember how they conducted themselves, so I'd be happy to augment the inspection team if I get the call. If I do, oh, that would be fun. So with that thought in mind, this is Bobo, Base Gear. Stop.